What's going on guys? Vic to be back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to disassemble this V-pin and we're going to assemble it again. This is a tutorial on how to assemble, disassemble, assemble your virtual pinball machine. Woo! All right, guys, you know, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. Click the link tree. Buy me a coffee if you want. That's a new thing I added uh, for other reasons. But yes, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? I'm improving my social game. I now had to do like a whole vertical template because uh, Instagram was messing up like my previews. And then not to mention now TikTok is getting like much bigger than other socials. So again, if you're not on the socials, you didn't click that link tree, what are you waiting for? And then check this out, I have this new animation. Yeah, be sure to subscribe and then like and then the bell. <laughs> yeah, be sure to do that. But enough of that, on this one today, we're gonna be doing something uh, unique. I wasn't really gonna make this public, but I'll be honest, ever since even my personal Simpsons pinball cabinet, the Hogwarts cabinet that went out, even this one here, the promo went out, uh, people are going crazy. They want details, details, details on a virtual pinball machine. So in reality, this video is going to be made for the customer. For this specific customer, I'll give you a quick breakdown. I don't want to make it too long and too, be too chatty because the customer is going to get this and he's going to watch this video to learn and see how to assemble his V-Pin. But uh, again, I'm making it public now because this way you can understand what goes in to actually, you know, assembling this. Uh, my cabinets are not built like real pinball machines where the back box is hinged and it could go down. I don't do that. Uh, I feel like there's a very big risk of stuff breaking. Um, you know, not to mention like it's just it's too much. I I don't I personally don't like the bar that that hinge arm on the I don't like it. So my cabinets are built differently. Uh, this situation I'm going to be driving this about a hundred miles out. Me and the customer will meet. And we're gonna swap it basically go from my truck to his car um, and it's gonna be in two pieces basically we're gonna have the back box and then we're gonna have the pinball cabinet itself again people think that this gets shipped like this no that's very risky uh, back box comes off the legs come off and the cabinet is on its own separate piece uh, but yeah again this is gonna go public so if you want to stick around and learn how it's done I'll show you so keep in mind, this is gonna be like filmed in phases because I'm gonna wrap this thing today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really wrap it. This isn't gonna leave my garage until maybe five days out from now. Uh, but I got the V pin that's right in front of you. You're there. You can see the edge of it. I gotta work on that. So this is gonna get wrapped. This way, it's just ready to go. So the way I'm shooting this video, uh, it will be a lot of cuts. I'm basically right now gonna take the glass off as like step one for the customer. But then in this same sequence, I'm going to be filming like the last step, which is like the final testing and all that. So just be prepared if I kind of forget stuff. But without further ado, let's rock. So again, in this customer situation, it's very unique what's happening. I'm going to give him the cabinet fully assembled without the LED matrix and the side rails in the cabinet. I did the same thing with Project Canada. But in this customer situation, he's going to unload it from his car. He is going to remove the glass. He is going to remove the side rails and he's going to remove the TV because this is going to go upstairs. And honestly, the TV, this QNED 50 inch screen, it's, it's heavy. I'm able to like lift it. Like I could do it, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't like struggling with it. So, uh, just keep that in mind. Then basically once the cabinet is there, you'll put the legs on first and then we'll work on like the wiring and stuff. So right now we're going to, remove the side rails, we're gonna remove the lockdown bar, and we're gonna remove the glass. If you do see though, right next to me, I do have this kind of padded, uh, it's really like a shipping cloth that I use on my personal shipments, like when I'm moving cabinets. Um, I do suggest that, because we're gonna lay the glass on this. Remember, it is tempered glass. This glass, it's big. For these 50 inch cabinets, it's a big piece of glass, so definitely wanna take care of it. Towards the end, we will wanna get some gloves to keep the fingerprints from it. But for right now, let's get going. Basically the side rails and the lockdown bar is the first thing that's gonna go out. I have basically four screws, it's very simple. There's one right here at the top and there's one by the lockdown bar. Same thing on the opposite side, there's four screws. 
let's get rid of the side rails and let's get rid of the lockdown bar but be very careful uh you know when you're removing the screw make sure you completely take it out try not to go anywhere near the side rail because the screw head if you touch the side rail you're going to scratch the paint on it so just be very careful so again let's start first with the four screws so in this situation i'm going to use a screwdriver you could use a drill you will need a drill later on but i already took off three screws again basically making sure that i'm not going to scratch any other rails and stuff putting the screws on the side i'm going to first start with the lockdown bar i'm going to pull the lockdown bar kind of towards me this way you know worst case whatever gets scratched is the inside that the lockdown bar will cover so i'm going to put it right here i'm going to make sure really not to have any of them kind of rub against each other that's just how i am personally so we're going to make the room for that i'm going to take the left rail pull out a little nice and I'm going to take the right rail. You really don't have to label these. There's only one way they will go in. You can tell by the holes on the side. But for right now, we are good to go. And now I'm going to take the glass. So the glass is not too bad. You kind of slide it out a little bit. Get a little bit of wiggle. Make sure you're on the actual sidewalls. You can now take it from here and up and boom. Awesome. All right, so I'll keep in mind again, the customer is going to get it without the LED matrix and the side rails in. It's going to be in a separate box. I know right now you saw them in. This right now is how the customer is at this point. So we're going to right now remove the TV. He wants to remove the TV. Also picture like there's no back box on this at this point. This back box is in your car still. Um, so let's remove the TV. Big thing in the front, I do have these two connectors here, these LED connectors. Just kind of tuck them down and under the TV. And cool. So this is awesome how I have this set up. This basically you're going to tilt upwards here. So you could grab your, your hands could go here. I have enough of a gap here. Basically nice and slow. We're not going to go too crazy. I'm going to basically pull this up. I can even do it with one hand as you can see. See? This kind of pulls up. And now with the other hand you can basically kind of wiggle it out. And boom. We're going to be out. Don't pull out too hard. You're going to use it here. We can put it right there on the side. Have somebody help you out. But the big thing right now is that we have to remove the HDMI. The HDMI cable is right here on the left side here. So HDMI is out. And now, this is going to be a little bit difficult, but that's how the TV is designed. The TV's power, it's not like a separate power plug that could come out. Unfortunately, it's not like that. I have on the right side, at the top, there's one black wire, the black plug. You're just going to wiggle that out. And now your TV is free. I'm going to bring you in close. So as you can see, you can see the power strip here on the right side. This top one is white. We're not going to touch that one. It is this one right here. I will also put a label for you. It'll say TV. Now you're free to pull out the TV. So there's two wires on the TV again. You have your HDMI, which is out. You can leave it on the side of the cabinet if you want. And then you have your plug here. You can now basically pick this up here and put it to the side. Luckily, I have another 50 inch v-pin that i'm making so i can just kind of tuck this in and we could continue so in reality right now you can now bring the pinball machine up to whatever room you're going to go in everything inside is secure again this pc right here with the special bracket i made it's not going anywhere i will take a quick second to just show off the inside but as of right now you basically could take this up the stairs it will be way lighter, much lighter than when you pulled it out of your car, 100%. So again, we're gonna take a quick look at the inside. You can see here, you have your two LED whizzes right here. Uh, and then you also have your two Sane Smart Boards here. In reality, you do have more you know, openings on the LED whiz if you wanted to add anything. Same thing with your uh, Sane Smart Board, you have more openings here. So it's just kind of crazy to see it. You got your power supplies here. You have all the wiring here. So it does look like a circus of colors. In the front right here is all the RGB flipper stuff. Uh, power, there's a lot of wires to it. Everything is good to go and down. I wouldn't worry about anything. Uh, I do also have the stuff glued down to the KL25Z board. So nothing should be disconnected in transit. You can also see my... Uh, the potentiometer for the plunger is all set and good there. And yeah, bring it on up. All right, so I guess we're gonna disassemble the back box now, but uh, I'll put in the timestamp when we reassemble it. But uh, it's pretty straightforward. Now, as you can see, there is a lot of wires. Some of you are like, whoa, like, there's a lot going on. 
There's a lot of connections I could see. It's nothing too crazy. In all honesty, we have a Molex connector. We have two of these kind of RGB style connectors. And then we have the HDMIs for back glass and DMD. And then the power for back glass and DMD. It's not too bad, don't, don't freak out. So this part is pretty straightforward. We're basically gonna be doing a couple of disconnects. Um, but the big thing I wanna make sure, you know, I'll talk while I go, is the big thing is we wanna make sure everything is connected before we give power to the cabinet slash turning on the PC. That is a big deal when it comes to this, mostly because of the displays. If you power on the, the PC and the HDMIs and the TVs are not on, you're gonna have a horrible time. I'm talking bad, bad time. Basically though, in this part, you will need a drill. As far as like assembling, you really just need a drill or a screwdriver when it comes to like the uh, rails. Um, and then you do need like a ratchet set for the legs. That's kind of basic stuff. But other than that, yes, you will need a drill here. I have here two, four, six, eight screws that are gonna hold down the back box. I right now though only have three of the eight screws actually in. So five of the screws, it will, you will need an impact drill and you know, go in. I do that on purpose. This way it's like, you know, fresh kind of wood threaded stuff. Uh, but basic stuff, definitely though, I do recommend and suggest that you do have a second person to help you with this. For me, I have kind of clamps. Um, I will do that, but in all honesty with this back box, it actually goes like right against it. It kind of fits like a, like a puzzle piece. Now this part's gonna be a little bit like weird because like I'm gonna basically be pushing the, in, I'm gonna be pushing the, the actual wires down into the cabinet. But again, I have everything labeled. BG HDMI, which is back glass. I got BG power. I have DMD HDMI. But as you can see, like this kind of bundle right here, this is coming from the cabinet. This is in the cabinet. As you can see, I do have a lot of slack when it comes to like power and HDMI and that's a-okay. That's why I do have this kind of little uh, Velcro strip so you could keep it up. But essentially everything else here, it's already like wired and set. You just gotta do the three or four connections that I mentioned, or five, and you'll be set. Right now, like I said, I'm gonna be taking this down. So in reality, I'm actually gonna be pushing down this kind of Molex connector and I'm gonna be pushing in like the HDMI. I could luckily do that because we have the TV out. So worst case, and I do have on the inside like everything kind of electrical taped or um, zip tied. So it's not like he's gonna lose anything. But uh, yes, you know, worst case, we have the front open so I can put my hand in and do it like that. But right now, like I said, my objective right now is that we're gonna be removing this back box and then we're gonna basically be putting it back on. But Let's go with the flow. So as you can see, see like the Molex connector is in. I now have basically, these are like the thickest of the, the biggest wires. Uh, again, HDMI and DMD power. And then also the uh, it was HDMI, back glass, DMD, power, back glass, DMD. So I'm gonna right now stuff down the HDMI. So it is kind of good in this situation to have the TV removed. Cause now you can see I have nothing there. I'm gonna show you how it's gonna look when he receives it, but right now, we are good to go. I'm gonna grab my drill. Gonna grab my drill and basically take out. I got one, two. I don't wanna lose the screws. You will get a baggie of screws. I'm gonna keep my hand on. Like I say in all my videos, I'm a one man show. So I don't got help. But basically right now, essentially, we are up and we are off. Awesome. So this is how I sent out Project Canada's. I had the wires out, just like this. This way you can visually see it. So you have, again, your Molex connector. We have these two kind of RGB connectors. One of them is labeled RGB and another one is labeled A1. And then we have the HDMIs for DMD and back glass. And then we have the power for DMD and back glass. So right now you can see it. This is all that's going into the back box. Back box is already pre-wired and said you're just gonna make the connections, but what I learned from Project Canada is either way you have to take out the TV because it's very difficult to like snake these through unless somebody's really holding the back box and the back box is fairly heavy. Uh, so right now I'm gonna basically push these downwards. And again, because we have this space here, that's awesome. You will also see here on the left, this painter's tape. This is going to the matrices. We're gonna deal with this later on. It's totally separate. We're gonna focus on this here. I'm most likely gonna put like a baggie around it or a rubber band behind it 
and uh, this way you know. So right now, yes, I'm gonna be pushing this din, downwards, I should say din. Pushing it downwards, this way I could kind of visually see where it is in the cabinet. And now we're gonna get our back box and we're gonna put it all in. So yes, this is all that wiring is gonna go up into the back box. So before we pick up the back box, just wanna show off real quick. There's eight of these gold screws. It's gonna be baggy labeled back box. You have eight gold screws. You're gonna have only four washers. Yes, you're only gonna have four washers. We're gonna put the back box up and basically we wanna get two screws ready. I would recommend one with the washer on and then one without it. Basically, there is a center row of screws and then a row of screws that go like very close to where the door is. The ones where the door is, there is no washer. You don't put the washer because it won't let you close the door. The other ones in the middle though, you're gonna put the washer. So right now I'm gonna get the back box up. I'm actually gonna, because I'm alone, I'm gonna put a clamp. This way it keeps it like stable. So again, I do recommend you do have somebody helping you with this, but basically I've been doing it many times and I can situate it just like that. So the big thing, this back box, it goes edge to edge. So there's really not like play as far as left and right, but the big thing is that you wanna make sure your back box lines up perfectly. You can see here I'm out. It should line up perfectly edge to edge with the back door here. So as you can see, I'm still you know holding it. If you have a helper, let them hold it and you'll start drilling. I will grab my clamp, which I have here. So I'm gonna grab my clamp now. Again, I'm alone and that's a-okay. I don't mess up any of the artwork. I'm gonna kind of avoid the center hole and I'm good now. This is not going anywhere. Again, you will have a friend. All right, right now we're gonna get ready to put in at least two to three screws. So I have a better visual of what I was talking about with the rows. So again, two rows, eight screws, four and four. The middle row here towards the like center of the cabinet, we have the washer here. The row here that's closer to the rear door, no washer. If you put a washer here, the door won't close properly. So you don't need it. I will give you eight washers in case you wanted it, but you don't need the washers here. Again, it's eight screws. And again, I'm only having three of them in now. Middle row here, we have the washer. Now we're gonna grab our drill and drill on in. Again, these three screws are the ones that I've, I've only had three screws in this whole time. The whole time of filming from the promo to the overview to me nudging, I've only had those three screws in. So you can see here, we got that. Make sure obviously there's no wires in the way. In, that's why I don't wanna puncture these because once you do this one that we're never really screwed in, it's gonna really grab the wood. And then we have this one here. And basically you're good. Once you get those three in, you're pretty much good to go. And again, I can remove my clamp and I don't have to worry about the back box falling off because it's dirty. So now again, this is not going anywhere. I don't have to worry about it. And I only have three of the eight screws in. Okay, I'm gonna give you a baggie of it. This is the only thing you'll have to screw in. Besides the leg bolts, like putting the leg and then the bolt on, this is the only thing you have to do. We're now gonna go to the front of the cabinet. We're gonna push our wires through while you're there. Basically, again, I'm in the front of the cabinet. I'm gonna find the hole, that's what she said, and we're gonna start bringing in some wires. So again, the customer pushed these wires down. I'm gonna have them up through the hole originally, but he pushed the wires down. You can basically start off with the big stuff. You know, start with the HDMIs, the power. There we go. Get that in, awesome. And then also the other HDMI. So I would definitely say start with that, and then we're gonna work with the Molex. So again, we have this Molex connector here and on this Molex I have zip tied the other two RGB wires. This is, these are longer than the Molex so I would recommend putting these through first. So again I have the two RGBs. I'm trying not to twine them with the HDMIs. And now I could grab the Molex connector and again it's gonna go in kind of like on a slant like that. Don't worry this is a Molex connector. You're not gonna break any pins out and we're just gonna push on through and snake on up. Now just to show you, I'm gonna bring the Molex down a little bit. So again, like I said, we have, I'm gonna take the whole Molex connector this way we can see it. I'm a very, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a visual guy. So again, HDMIs, powers are there. I wouldn't put them in just yet, let them hang. Again, looking at the front, I'm gonna run these RGB wires. So RGB, we have those two connectors there. Everything is soldered and everything, so you don't have to worry about pulling. And again, we now have the final piece, which is the Molex. 
and boom. Awesome. So now I'm gonna give some slack to the Molex. I'm still with my left hand, kind of feeding in some wires, making sure that we are good to go. Doesn't have to be too crazy. You're not gonna pull everything out, but we basically wanna make sure that our Molex connects. Now this is very crucial, especially when it comes to the HDMI's and the powers, but let's do the basics. Let's connect the Molex. Molex connector, what I love about this, there's only one way this goes in. There's a little nub, nub to nub, in. Awesome, you could tuck this underneath this kind of Vibs board if you want. We have now this RGB, again there's two of them. One of them says A1. The A1 wire goes to the right side, and you can see here it says A1 to A1. Again, you can't mix them up because there's only one way to connect them. And then on the left side here, right by the DMD, this is the RGB. So we have RGB, RGB, this is really for the matrix. This is what's talking to the uh, addressable speakers. And we're good. Now, honestly, at this point, you could definitely do the other eight screws. I should have said that. But now we're gonna focus on the main things, which are the HDMIs and the power. Let's start with the back glass first. So that's the 32 inch monitor. We basically have for that one, it's kind of like your PC power plug type thing, the three prong. And then obviously we're gonna look for the back glass HDMI. This one is gonna piss you off <laughs> because you're gonna have to like kind of look. I honestly take out my phone and kind of put the camera upwards, but let's do it together. I'm gonna to kind of just finger this real quick. Uh, there's no way to avoid it, but basically I could feel the three prongs. So I'm right now putting the third prong, the ground prong is outwards. And basically we just gotta kind of feel around for it. Again, you could use like your camera and you know, put it in like that and you know, underneath and try to get a visual on it. I right now could feel it here. I'll probably put, yeah, all right, cool, I'll do that. So I'll put a little like marking here for you. Now it's good with the ViewSonic is that it only has one HDMI input, which usually these monitors have. I could see it here, the flat end. So again, I'm gonna make sure that I grab the correct HDMI, so back glass, the flat end of the HDMI, so you can see the curve, the flat end goes up like this. So again, I'll put, I'll put a sticker. This is probably the most, this is probably the most nerve wracking part of the, of the procedure, the process, but uh, it has to be done. <laughs> but yes, I will get it and then I will put a sticker. Don't, you know, don't rush this part. You don't wanna bend any like HDMI pins and I'm in. Boom, cool, did it on camera. So right now for the customer, I'll put another blue sticker here and it'll say HDMI. Cool, so we got the main stuff, that power is in. Also be sure that it is in, HDMI is in. The DMD is fairly easy because the connectors are here. So you have one input for HDMI is right there and then we also do have the power here. Awesome, good. Now in all honesty, like for me, I would rather you have this HDMI and the power slack in the back box. This way it doesn't, you know, you don't risk touching the fans in here. Obviously you're gonna look back and forth, make sure you're not too tight. So I got one HDMI, I'm gonna bring up the DMD HDMI. Again, looking back and forth, making sure that we're not tangled on anything. You can see I'm kind of pull, I don't wanna pull too hard though. Don't pull too hard or else you're gonna take it out of the PC. And then same thing with the power, again, just going back and forth. Doesn't have to be crazy high, nothing too crazy. Just wanna make sure that you're clear of the fans. And then we need also the DMD power. So again, going back and forth. This is as tight as could be. Awesome, now like I said, you could utilize the Velcro here. Be sure also don't break the, the pins uh, as far as the DMD and such. So basically right here, doesn't have to be a neat job. Luckily this customer doesn't have like a, um, like Project Canada where it's like a display. Cause if it did, it would be a whole different wiring job. But basically that is it. Leave some slack though for your DMD power. So like this DMD power didn't go down. So we could always just leave it here. Same thing with the HDMI, just leave it a little bit. You don't wanna to be too crazy with it. You're basically set. I can't stress it enough though. You wanna make sure your HDMIs, your power is in. I, I can't stress enough that you must, it's a must. And we're ready to test. And then one last obvious note I should mention to save my butt, you will also look at your PC here. Make sure definitely your HDMIs are connected and such as you can see here. I'll take a picture, I'll send this out to the customer uh, in case uh, he ever wants to remove the PC. I have this kind of bar right here. This again is keeping your PC in place. So you unscrew this bar and then the whole PC will slide out. 
I'll basically take a picture and I have all obviously the USBs labeled. Uh, so in case you ever has to do work on it, you could pull it out and such. But basic stuff, basically want to make sure that your, your HDMIs are connected, make sure that they're still in the PC. Same thing with the Playfield HDMI. Now let's put the TV back. Save this part for the end, but I'm just gonna do it real quick. You could take the rear door. There's no screws on this door. This door goes flush. No joke, I'm talking flush. There you go, it's it. So once you have to remove it, you put your thumbs inside the holes and pull out and you're good to go. Awesome. Let's start a rip. So at this point now, we're gonna bring the TV in. We are almost at the finish line. What's also great with the TV being out, all those connections that we just did going to the back box and stuff, you have enough room to play with. Again, all the wires are at the top for you, but majority of the time you will most likely push them down to keep the back box on. So again, you have all your openings here, just so you can you know, put your hands and stuff. But for right now, everything is good. I can't stress it enough. Triple check, quadruple check, singular check, uh, whatever say, singular check. Just, you gotta make sure all the connections here are in. Make sure that back glass HDMI is in. Make sure the power is in. Because once we put the TV in place, we're going to get ready to power on. So now I'm going to grab the TV. Again, I have my HDMI cable right here. It's floating just like where we left it here. I can always leave it out here and such. What's really cool with this TV and how the cabinet is, if you ever needed to open it up and work on stuff, you could put the TV vertically or horizontally here and it's it won't like really go anywhere or you could at least work here and still have the screen here my personal build sometimes i don't really advise you to do it but sometimes yes i'll have the whole system booted up and the tv here if i'm ever trying to rewire something or anything so without further ado we're gonna grab our tv and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna actually gonna put this kind of like what i just mentioned I will put it horizontally. So it's kind of cool. You can see like I have my TV mount, it's a custom mount there. But as you can see, I have enough slack to plug in the power here. And then also here, I have enough slack on the HDMI to you know plug in my HDMI. So again, even at this point, I could even move the TV a little bit. I would still keep my hand on it, you know, just in case it slides. But I have my TV power, same thing. It's gonna go on the right outlet the right power strip right underneath the white. This way it's very quick. You wanna keep it as high up, this way you have enough slack for it. So power is in and set. Let's do the HDMI. So now let's get ready to do the HDMI. For this situation here, I'm gonna actually bring the TV up a little and then put it on a slant. Make sure that I'm not crushing the HDMI. And again, now I can basically see it. We're gonna put this in HDMI three. Three. Which HDMI? HDMI 3, not 1, not 2, HDMI 3. On this TV, even on the C2, you'll see on that HDMI 3, it says something about 100, 120 hertz 4K eARC. So I put it on HDMI 3. HDMI wire, is, HDMI wire is good to go. I can now basically proceed and put the TV in place. Now before I put the TV in place, I just want to make a quick note on a couple of things. This bar right here, once we put the TV in, you're gonna see the TV mount here. It's gonna go right up, but against this bar here, okay? Also, while we're here, but we're gonna do it later on, we're gonna make sure that we could visibly see our two addressable LED connectors. They are right here, they're kind of zip tied in, so it's not gonna be in the middle of the cabinet. They will be forward here. Let's put the TV in, and then we'll worry about this later on. So now we're gonna grab our TV. Again, I could grab it right on the edges. We have the power plugged in and we have the HDMI in. This part right here, I'm, not, I'm gonna be brutally honest, it's gonna take some finagling to go, but it will go in. It won't go lopsided, it won't flip on you. Basically, we're gonna take the TV. As you can see, it's in my hands. I'm gonna put my left hand in like this and kind of just wiggle it down. And as you can see, it will go into place. Now, like I mentioned before, Overhead, I'm gonna bring you in. I'm right now, there's a gap where that bar is. I can now basically take this and kind of like do like a little wiggle and butt it up against that bar and then we'll be good. So I have you in my hands. You can see right here, you see that? That's where the bar is and that's where the TV mount is. I have a tiny gap. I'm gonna basically just wiggle the TV until I can't wiggle no more. 
So now again, I'm gonna take the edge of the TV and I'm gonna basically just do like a little bit of a wiggle. I'm basically going like, I'm, I'm rocking. This way it gets as close as possible. The left side here doesn't butt up totally against it because getting this really straight was a pain, but the one on this side here goes right up against it. You basically won't go any farther than what it is. So going back to what I said, right now the TV is in a good spot. You may or may not see that connector we were talking about with the RGB. So worst case, you could just lift up the top here, reach in, I'm gonna put this connector kind of overboard here, and then I'm gonna take this connector, put it overboard here, and good to go. So again, I could visually see here, I could kind of wiggle it. I didn't make it too long because that's gonna be visible on the play field and such, but I have my two connectors out, we have our TV in, we right now, honestly, we could power on. So yes, I did say it correctly, we could power on now. Vic, what about the glass? What about the side rails? What about the LED matrix? What about the LED strips? We're gonna do all that last. We're gonna save that for last. I cannot stress this enough. I really can't, please. Can't stress it enough. Make sure all of your connections are in. Everything inside this back box, make sure it is in before we power on. There's gonna be a couple ways that we're gonna see everything, at least as far as power wise is on, but we won't really tell everything until the actual PC is on. So let's go slow. We're right now gonna take our power, power plug and we're gonna plug it in, we're gonna flip the switch, and you're gonna hear fans go on. You're gonna see an actual fan, the, the rear exhaust fans, you're gonna see those turn on, and then we're gonna see the displays turn on, okay? Big thing, we wanna make sure that the displays actually turn on. They will turn on on their own. There is no power button on this, there's no, no. These are set to power on once you give power, so I can't stress it enough. I right now am gonna go in the rear, I'm gonna flip the switch. I could hear some fans, I could visually see it. The big thing right here, I'm staring right here, one, two, this is on. So, so far so good, the only big thing is to make sure that your HDMI connections are in. I cannot stress it enough, you can see I'm still talking, right? Do not press that power button until this TV has this image or some image on it. I cannot stress it enough, okay? Please, do not power on, as you can see it takes about, I don't know, five or 10 seconds to get this point right here. Once you see this, you are good to go and press the power button in the middle. Press it one time. You could even visually kind of see a couple of LED lights go on. That's because of the PC. You could even hear a couple of things happen. Right now, we're gonna let it do its thing. Popper will start up and such, but we're just gonna make sure right now that our displays are on. Yes, the back glass has no icons. The DMD does not have any icons on it. So right now, so far, it's looking good. We're just gonna let Popper start up. Just to give you a heads up, it may be a little loud or it may be a little low. We're gonna adjust the volume later on. It's gonna be an awkward pause for that, but I'm gonna just keep it going. Again, just to see Popper. Uh, I was playing around with the volume, like I was actually playing NBA Fast Break because that's the bye week we're playing. Welcome to Hell in a Box. Awesome. I lowered the volume physically, but as you can see, so far, so good. Backlash, DMD, play field. Awesome. I'll be brutally honest, if you were like off, if this has no image on it, it will be a huge nightmare. I will have to viewer, uh, team viewer in and adjust stuff. It gets, gets hectic. I cannot stress it enough. Be sure that all your connections are in before even giving power to the cabinet. Now, definitely you're going to see the volume will be low. I will give it to you low. There's no, you know, hey Vic, what happened? No, don't worry about it. I will purposely do that because I don't want you to you know, blow your ears out and such. But yes, so far, so good. Technically, you could go about and play. You can see like now DOF activated. That was the popper attract mode. You're gonna see like we have our flashers, awesome. Big thing we could see here while I was talking, hopefully you saw this, this lit up while popper was still on. This is all good. But hey Vic, what happened to my speakers? That's last, that's the addressable LEDs. That is going to be last. That is last, 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 last. Now this part right here for the customer, and I'm also saying this for all the customers, you might be confused at this part because you might be saying, hey Vic, I don't see anything. I don't see a back glass. I don't see any, there's nothing there. It's just a blank screen or it just says pin up popper. Yes, I say it in all my videos, even before we start 
talking. I do not give you media. I do not give you tables. I do not give you ROMs. All I'm doing is basically building you the cabinet with the DOF setup and such. Everything else is on you. Again, all the emulators are there. Pinup Popper is set up, but now you have to do the hard work of media, downloading tables, downloading B2S, and such. Everything is already configured though. So solenoids and such will go according to your table, depending on which table you download and such. Again, I want to, I can't stress it enough. This customer knew all the customers that inquire about this, they know the deal. I do not give you tables. I do not give you ROMs. I do not give you media. This right here, when you get this again, I ha I'm filming this. I have to still wipe out my tables and ROMs. Again, I'm just kind of showing you how this is the end result of it. This is going to say pin a popper. There's a pin a popper here. I always leave my topper of video here, which it says game case arcades on it. And then here it's just going to say pin a popper. Now, Vic, like why do you have it set up though to launch? Because that's like the end game. Once you get everything set up, I want it where you plug in, you start up and it goes. That is the best thing. There is ways to exit popper if you want blue button and the red, you are now on your desktop. So if you want to save the time, blue button red and now you can even go ahead connect to your wi-fi here download some tables and such and then play from there now the way i build my systems everything is in the c drive so visual pinball vpx it's c drive visual pinball future pinball c drive future pinball pin up menu uh c drive pin up system pin up menu that's how i always have my stuff set up so you can download a vpx table you can now connect to the internet you can use your wi-fi and then download a table and such my big thing if you want, because some people are going to say, hey Vic, you know, I want to test the solenoids and stuff. As you can see, we still have the glass open. That's a-okay. There is two options you could do. Download a table and then play the table. Or I have in the C drive, direct output, LED Wiz test software, and there's a red thing that says new LED tester. Okay. I'm not going to show you this. I'm just going to verbally say it. I will also guide the customer when he calls me and everything. But basically at this point, there's a list. Of the two LED wizards, so one that's a solenoid. I could do solenoid four. Awesome. I have 10 solenoids, so I could do all 10. 11 is the beacon, 12, I believe, is the shaker. Nope, that's strobes. 13 is the shaker. So there is ways to test it and such. The, honestly, the better way is to download a table and then launch it. So right now, inside of VPX, once you get your whole thing set up. I'm gonna basically just launch a table outside of Popper. Popper is the final like frontier, <laughs> going with Star Trek. That's the end, like that's that's totally done. Once you have everything pre-set up in and outside of Popper, then you're set. Right now I double click on MBA Fast Break. It's gonna launch. We're gonna have the back glass. If you put your back glass file there, if there's nothing here, that means you don't have the back glass, the B2S file set up. Your DMD should be good. Same thing, you might not have a full DMD like me if you didn't put the media in and such. Again, that's on you. I'm not, I, I don't do, I don't deal with that. You gotta, you do that on your own as far as the media and such. But right now, we have a table set. So there's gonna be two things that we could do in this situation. Again, we still don't have the LED matrix in, we don't have the side rails in. Play a table, let's play. Put some coins in. You could hear the um, the exciters. That's already set. But I obviously have no sound. Hey Vic, I don't hear anything. In the rear of the cabinet, I have the volume knob. You will adjust. I highly suggest doing the volume knob now. Basically, you're going to set it to the comfortable volume. Not ear piercing loud. You don't want to go loud. You're like, oh. you want it to be like where it's like normal gameplay. Where basically you're gonna make the volume go lower. The volume will never go higher, it will go lower. So before we go into the rear of the cabinet, let's look at pin vol. Let's make sure pin vol is at max volume. So the blue button here is our shift. You hold shift and the flipper buttons is your global volume. You wanna make sure that's at 100%. Your magnet save is the table volume. That should also be at 100%. And then also you can play around with it. The start and the coin is the exciter. I usually leave it at around one or two, but that's how it is. Right now we're making sure that global volume is at 100, table volume is at 100. Now let's go to the rear and we're gonna raise up the volume. I should say before we go to the rear, let's put some coins in and start the game, okay? So right now you might've heard like the coin drops, that's because of the SSF. We're gonna go in the rear now and we're gonna adjust the volume. So in the rear of the cabinet, on the right side here is a circular puck. 
you can see there, I'm able to raise and lower the volume. Underneath the puck, right on the bottom, there is a little slider for the bass. So I always say right now, let's focus on the actual volume of the table. Again, you don't want it loud where you can't hear yourself talk. It should be comfortable volume. Basically, you don't want it to go any higher than that. So I don't want the bass too crazy. And again, you can adjust it as you go, basically leave this door open. And you know, you kind of want to stand in front of the machine and such. So I'm going to leave it there and let's go to the front. So again, that volume knob, you're going to play around with it. It's not going to be a one and done kind of thing. You're going to play this table a little bit. You might hear that it's too loud and such, then you want to lower it. This right now, again, it's a hundred percent. This shouldn't go any higher. I right now feel like I'm yelling. So I feel like maybe the volume is too loud. I'm going to just kind of start and we're going to see, I, I might cut because I don't want like to get hit with copyright for the sound, but let's just see. So like to me right now, this is good. I can hear the gameplay and such, not to mention you will be playing around with it once you close the glass and stuff. So we're gonna let this drop. Basically what I'm trying to get at is be sure before you kind of totally clear up and, and close up, you wanna just make sure that your volume is good. Everything right now you can even see, we can test. We got solenoids going off, my launch button works, we got the strobe. Again, you could have done that in the LED tester software. But right now, we're good. Basically, right now, we're gonna now do the LED matrix. Let's let's finish this up. Let's do it. So in a box, you're gonna get the side rails. There's gonna be two side rails and the LED matrix. So I'm gonna first start off with the side rails. Side rails will be labeled. It will say like right, it'll have like right, rear. I didn't label it yet, but I will do it for you. I'll most likely put right and then rear. This is the front of it here. And I'm gonna grab the other one. So I got my left. Again, it's gonna say left rear here. We're not gonna worry about the perfection of the placement right now. You can also see, hopefully you could see, I have it actually kind of sticking out of the cabinet right now. It's not against it exactly, but right now we have our side rails and now we're gonna grab our actual matrix. So two big things here. Right here, you're gonna have this painter's tape here. There's, this is holding wires right here there's a bunch of wires that are here i'm going to take you in close we're going to connect the wires but basically right now we're going to take our matrix you can kind of see how it is there we have this kind of pigtail here the pigtail is going to go to the right of the cabinet so this again this is like it's not going to go in smooth you might have to kind of wiggle it in be very careful here be very gentle you don't want to drop it on the tv that is exactly why i don't have this kind of shipped in transit like this. But basically what we could do is flip it downwards, make sure nothing is there. And I'm gonna bring this down and cool. So as you can see, yes, I could see the wires right now because we're gonna get ready to do connections. So we got you right there. Again, you can do this with the power on. It's nothing gonna, nothing's gonna explode. This is five volt stuff. So you can see here, we have one, two, three, four connections, okay? Very simple, honestly, everything goes accordingly. So you can see this red, white, and green connector. It goes to this right here. So there's only one way to go. That clips in, awesome. We have a red and black. And then again, to the matrix, remember I said earlier, that pigtail, this goes here. You don't have to jam these in. I'll be honest, these connectors are like, once you jam it in, it's like set. I wouldn't jam it totally in, okay? But we do have still one more connector. So, so far we did the red, green, and white, and then we did the pigtails here, the black and red. This connector here is for the right LED matrix rail. So what I could do here is I'm gonna now take my rail and find, before I do that, I'm gonna find this, there we go. See that, we got our little wire. We're gonna scoop it underneath, finagle it a little, and cool. There's enough slack basically now. This again is the LED rail. And then our connector and boom good there so we got our four connections there now we have one connection here now same thing we have one connection here i'm going to lift up a little take my left rail and again my wire basically comes right underneath and then we connect it here and you could you could play around with it you have slack for this it's not very tight you have some slack and we are connected and good now basically again we don't want the rails to be in the cabinet it's still sticking out i can now kind of do a little spin 
Again, making sure that we're not up against the TV and stuff. Making sure now I'm gonna do like kind of like a convertible. Make sure none of the wires are on the TV here. Keeping it flat here, I'm gonna go in and then down. So don't worry about this just yet. We're gonna make sure that the wire is not on the screen. So it kind of tucks away. In and then down. That is it. This is gravity fed. Once this is set here, you don't have to worry about it falling. This is gravity fed. Now we could go ahead and take our rails and it's gonna go right up against it. I'm gonna now cut real quick and bring you to the other side. So I already did the left, we're focusing on the right. Again, the front here, this top here, it's already connected. So as you can see, like I have room to play with, I have some wiring and stuff to play with. So I'm basically not gonna go up against it, I'm keeping my eye here and I am in. As you can see, like it's right up against the cabinet, I'm here, we're good to go. Now we're gonna focus on the front. Remember in the beginning we had those two pigtails? We're gonna make sure that we can still see those pigtails so I can see it here. Awesome. So again, this is in the cabinet. This goes with this. Again, you can't mess this up. This, it's only one way that it will connect. So if you have it you know, flipped, it won't connect, it won't plug in. But basically now, we are, we're good. LED matrix is in. So now we get tested. I'm still gonna run NBA fast break. Really, you could probably test it better with popper because, hey Vic, my lights aren't on. Yes, keep in mind, not all the tables have a beautiful attract mode set up and such, so just, you gotta keep that in mind. Right now I have the table running. I'll put some coins in. We still have no activity. I'm gonna press start. But once I press start, I do see here, we have one strip there. I'll launch the ball and we can see some stuff happening. Very cool. So that's honestly it. Your LED matrix is set up. Probably the easier way, honestly, is to launch popper. Popper, once you launch it after about 10 seconds, DOF connects and then you're gonna see the whole light show and stuff. But all in all, right now, we are at a great place. Everything here is good to go. Me, personally, um, I wouldn't put the glass in just yet. Play a couple of tables. When it comes to the flippers, there is ways to kind of bend the actual like connector. Cause some of you might say, hey Vic, it's too sensitive or it's not sensitive enough. So there's ways to play around with it. So I would suggest play your table for a little bit. And now once you played it and you're all said and done, you could put the glass on and we'll put the side rails on. And honestly, in all brutal honesty, once you do all that, I lost. <laughs> once you do all that, you will probably never open up the table again. This right now, I know this video, like, Vic, man, this is complicated. Honestly, once you have it set, you're set. You shouldn't have to open up anything, unless down the future, a solenoid dies out, maybe a same smart board burns out, but you really shouldn't have to open this thing up. Now, real quick, before you put the glass on, I forgot to mention this, be sure to take off the yellow sticker on the TV. I purposely leave that there, so customers know that this is a brand new TV. So yes, take off your yellow sticker, and again, one big thing I forgot to mention, is right here, be sure that your LED wires for the matrix is tucked in underneath. You shouldn't be able to see it just like how you are. You shouldn't have to see it, but let's go. Let's put the glass on. So now let's get our glass, and all honesty, I do recommend, I highly recommend, grab yourself some gloves, glove up, and then Windex both sides, or really I should say, Windex the bottom, save the top for last. You definitely wanna Windex it. I'm not gonna do it right now because honestly, it's already like a smudge fest, I'm doing it for the video. But basically we're gonna grab our glass. We're gonna put it right on top, basically making sure that it's on the edges. Push all the way in. Again, this piece of glass is exact. Like very minimal overhang. You're talking about like a millimeter at best. Side rails go first and then the lockdown bar goes next. So again, you're gonna see this is the left side. I can tell because you can see here, that hole is in the middle but on the bottom, uh, on the opposite side where the lockdown bar is, it's very close to the bottom here. So this here, nice and gently, will go here. The lock, the side rail here goes in, into the back box, it goes in it. So it will be flush right up against it. So I got that one, I'm gonna zoom in on that one so you can see the right. So I got my right one, I got you right here, you want your eyes right here. Basically, if I go like that, you see I have that little bit of a gap, you just gotta kind of wiggle in, push in, and it will go in just like that. That is just how tight it is. It's a good thing it is that. It has to be butt up right against the T-molding, so we're good here. Now we got the lockdown bar. Again, I'm gonna aim for the you know, inner edges here, 
So I'm in on both sides here, down and then upwards, and we're good to go. Now we put the screws in. I already have you there, so I'm gonna just put this one in here. Again, using a screwdriver for this. Be sure to go very slow and carefully. Again, your holes should be lined up right here, which they are, and boom. Again, go slow with this, because if you all go off, you might hit the paint, and yeah. But one, two, three, four. Everything is already preset and good to go. And there you guys have it. There it is. Your V-pin is up and functioning. Again, you're gonna have to download the tables and the ROMs and do all that. But again, everything is basically set up for you. So I hope this customer does enjoy the heck out of it. It's been a journey and uh, live long and prosper, my friend. Again, Vic VP, Game Case Arcades. It's a beautiful pin.